Hey, good morning, guys. Just wanted to show you um, one of my processes and how we've um, significantly improved it uh, in terms of how long it takes and uh, the impact return that we get on it. So look, here I am at um, Foreclosures Daily. So uh, they the name is kind of tricky, but they do all kinds of data. So I log in here to get my probates. And then every week, every Wednesday, we go back and we start a week earlier and go until today's date and then click search. And I have 106 new or updated items um, here to download. So I select all, export as CSV, entire search, and I'm going to go right into batch at the top, batch lead stacker, go over to import. And so I'm going to open this file just to look at it really quickly. But I should be able to upload it straight to batch in the same format. Yeah, good. Okay. We're just going to upload this as a CSV. Watch how easy this is. It's become so quick for us. Technical difficulties are not a new thing for me, so excuse that. But here we go. Okay, so next, now we're going to map the filters, or I'm sorry, map the fields. Uh, mailing state, no, we don't want that. Do not import. Seed name, yes, yes. Property address, we don't want this one. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, we do. We want this one. is this mailing address that we don't want right here. So we want to actually grab the personal representative's home address and make that the mailing address. So I'll walk through that in just a minute. Date of death, PR, first name, yes, okay. PR address, this is the mailing address now. Attorney's last name. Okay, so these are all the fields mapped that we need. The decedent name, the person that died, the property address, the property that they own that we're trying to uh, call about to inquire if they're selling. Uh, bedrooms, date of death for the PR, that's a custom map field. The PR first and last name is the first and last name of the record because this is the person we're going to contact. The PR address, that's the mailing address. So any mail that goes out, we'll send it to them there. And we're going to go down the probate right there. Opt out, no, submit. So very quickly, it'll give us how many records? 148. Really? Were there that many? For updated 71 and not imported 43. So a lot of times it'll tell me that this address has already been same address, exist and current, upload multiple times, so same thing. So some of these were just updated records. Same address, same address, same address, not a valid address. So one of the cool things about Batch Lead Stacker is it tells you when you upload an address, it tells you if it's not mailable. So it's already telling you not a valid USPS address. And I've looked into this a little bit, um, and it seems pretty intuitive. It uses other databases to let you know if your mail is not going to hit, which is awesome to know that before. Same address exists. Okay, so I'm going to go back and look at the import log again. And so it gave us 34 brand new uh, properties that we didn't have before. Okay, so it can show us that. What I'm going to do here now is go to the filters and look at this uh, list that I just imported. So I'm going to click filters, go to my list for probate, and then tags 0115, this one. So I want to see all. 
And so it says I imported 105. So there's other ones from the 148 down to the 105. Those were duplicates. So it looks like a lot of these I already have skip trace, but I can tell quickly. So I'm going to go opted out, no. So I can tell you how many uh, have opted out already from this, or how many we've opted out. So about six. We're down to 99. And then I'm going to look and I'm going to say skip traced, yes. How many of these 99 have I skip traced already? Forty-eight out of the ninety-nine I've skip traced already. So I'm going to click no because watch this. This is one of the coolest things about Batch Lead Stacker. Fifty-one that are not skipped, that are technically new or possibly didn't uh, bring back a result before when we skipped them. So I'm going to select all. So there's fifty-one selected. Action skip trace. Probate update. Purchase. It estimates it'll cost $7.14. Purchase. Okay, watch this. I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna stay here on the same um, screen and I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna go to the skip trace screen and I'm gonna show you how quick it normally comes back. So 51 records, they're skipping and it says it's processing. So I'll give it like 30 seconds and I'm gonna refresh the screen and then I'll show you um, how intuitive uh, how easy this makes uh, deploying all your data. So refresh, 51, existing matches, 0, 47. So it came back with 47 hits out of 51 records, a 92% hit rate right there at a total cost of six and a half bucks. So watch this, add to database. So I think this is a new feature here actually for my buddy Evo and Jesse and Annie. Okay, so watch, just to show you that they're now these 47, so we don't have well, four here inside probate. So I'm going to go back to filters, and I'm going to look at, again, probate. And I'm going to include a 115, the import that I just did. Apply filters. Opt it out. Included in, what did I do wrong? Clear filters. Probe it. Okay, so there's 99. And now watch. I'm going to click skip traced. Yes. So out of the 99, Ninety-five uh, skip trace results. How amazing is that? So I've been doing this video for maybe uh, twelve minutes total. Been working on the skip trace for three minutes, and now we have ninety-five out of ninety-nine uh, new results for skip trace back in. So uh, just using Batch um, to process our data, our list, our skip trace, and keep it all integrated has really made this a time-saving process. Uh, before, no joke, when I was taking these probate records. Exporting them, skip tracing them, re-downloading them, syncing the data and, and the, uh, the column headers and everything across. This was a, a several hour process. And so I had a VA do it and it just became a very lengthy process. Um, but the batch guys came along and gals came along and made this like a fully integrated system. It's been a huge time saver for us. So um, let me know how I can help you guys inside a, a batch even. Um, it's become one of my favorite tools just because it's so practical and makes our our marketing really deployable. So um, anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Got to run.